Hello and welcome to my tiny home on wheels. What you see here behind me is my 2022 Ford F250 Tremor and a Super Tramp camper sitting on top of a flat bed with storage boxes on the side. I call this an expedition vehicle and uh, the idea behind this is that I can take this vehicle, take it to almost any place on the planet and uh, then be able to work remotely from those locations. So if we look around, this is one of the reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, this is really for me to go out in nature a little bit more, connect with nature, be away from the stressful city life that uh, is impacting every one of us with noise and um, all the activities uh, going on. So it's like city life has its place, but um, in the long term for me, I find it very stressful. And being able to work with a view like this for me, this is very relaxing and uh, motivating. So that's one of the reasons why I'm building this vehicle or why I built this vehicle. Uh, specifically, I'm talking, of course, first the United States and potentially Canada. But down the road, I want to take this expedition vehicle uh, all the way to the Arctic Ocean, turn around and then go south into Mexico, Middle America, South America, to the bottom of Argentina, and then decide where to take this next. But that's why I'm calling this an expedition vehicle. And the entire build out really is geared towards that goal to go down to the bottom of Argentina. So I mentioned before, this is a 2022 Ford F250 Tremor. This is running the 7.3 liter gas engine. And I picked a gas engine specifically uh, that I can go into South and Middle America because the diesel situation down there is significantly different. Uh, the newer trucks with the newer engines really have problems with the high sulfur diesel uh, that is available in Middle and South America. Here in the United States and Canada, uh, you're getting the low sulfur diesel and um, yeah, the switch between between the two, it's not good for the engines. And so I know the diesel uses less uh, or gives me better miles per gallon than the gasser. But uh, with this engine, I shouldn't have any problems making it all the way down to the bottom of Argentina. So that's the idea behind it. And now let's go through and uh, take a look what this truck has to offer and then what the camper has to offer. Since we're here in the front, let's take a look at the front. You can see down here, I have a winch. This is the Ford Performance winch. Uh, I installed this myself as the truck did not come with the winch. This winch can pull 12,500 pounds. It should be okay with this truck, even though I'm probably reaching the limit, but that's the only winch that uh, fits into the factory bumper. At one point, I might switch to a different bumper, one with a brush guard, so that I have protection in case I hit a deer or any type of other animal. But for now, um, this is as good as it gets. The next thing you see here behind the grill are two six inch ember light bars from Dynamics, And uh, they really help me with driving in fog, rain, dust, snow. Ember light is just uh, better with uh, less reflective uh, with light bouncing back from rain or snow or dust. On the hood here, you can see I have two additional lights. Those are the so-called A-pillar lights or ditch lights. Those are Morimoto lights. Morimoto is a well-known company providing or building lights for off-road vehicles and uh, trucks. And uh, these are the four banger lights that they have. And they put out a fantastic light. So when I drive in a really dark area with no street lights and I turn these on, it's almost like uh, the night turns into day. That's how bright these two lights are. Those in combination with the LED front lights and the two LED uh, amber lights light bars. Yeah, um, when I'm in the darkness somewhere, I can definitely see out or look out into the front and have no problems. I still need to put some more lights onto the side of the truck so I have a little better visibility there. But uh, for now, this is a really great setup from a lighting perspective. And um, I'm really happy with um, how this has turned out. Okay, so now let's take a look at the tires, wheels and the suspension. When the truck came from the factory, it was on 35 inch tires. And uh, now I'm sitting on 18 inch wheels with 37 inch tires. Those are Falcon Wild Peak AT3. And uh, this is like a mixed tire. So it gives me really good performance on the street, uh, but also very good performance when going off-road. Looking a li little bit under here, uh, you can see the Kali King 
suspension or the Ching Reservoir. Uh, this is the Kali pin top suspension. It gives the truck a two and a half inch, half inch lift and uh, really helps with uh, A, carrying the weight when going off-road and making it a much smoother ride. When I got the truck from the factory, yeah, it was really bumpy. I mean, it's a truck, you expect a certain bumpiness, but uh, this stock suspension was not that impressive. And now, especially in carrying a lot of weight, uh, I needed to do something. And the Kali pin-top suspension is one of the best suspensions for a heavy-duty truck carrying a lot of weight. Speaking of carrying the weight, so uh, the truck has leaf springs in the rear and I replaced the factory leaf springs with a Carly uh, leaf spring pack. This is a pack designed for trucks that uh, permanently carry a lot of weight. In my case, uh, this is designed to carry 2,000 pounds of weight on a permanent basis. There's one pack above that I could potentially go with, but for now, this is really the combination that I have. And I'm very happy with how this has turned out. So let's go back to the front here and have a quick look. Um, so you can see I have tinted windows. Uh, the truck unfortunately is black. That was not my preferred color. But uh, yeah, it attracts the heat. It's super hot in the sunshine. If I touch this now, it's really hot. So you don't want to do that. With, with the tinted windows, it helps a lot to reduce the temperature inside. The black color of the truck is not ideal. Anyway, uh, up here I have a Sherpa roof rack and on top of the roof rack I have this antenna here that's a cell booster antenna, that's a WeBoost. And what this does, it picks up a weak cell phone signal and amplifies it, giving me a significantly improved cell phone connection. This is not just important for me when I drive and uh, want to download updated maps, but it's also important for me since I want to work remotely, I'm carrying an, a T-Mobile home internet with me. That's uh, pretty much an online modem for the 5G network and it provides me with high-speed internet no matter where I go. So this is not like a hotspot. It's a full-blown home internet setup that uh, T-Mobile, Verizon um, and AT&T sell. So this one here works of the cell phone network and with the WeBoost cell booster, if I have a weak signal, I could use the T-Mobile home internet connected to the we boost cell signal and have a high speed internet connection in areas where otherwise the cell phone signal would be too weak. If there is no cell phone signal, of course, this will not do anything. Uh, for those cases, I still have a Starlink up on the roof and we'll talk about this here in a little bit. So let's have a look under the hood. This uh, truck, as mentioned before, is a 7.3 liter gas engine. It's a V8 and uh, it's the so-called Godzilla engine. And uh, I mean, it's a huge engine and it has, has a lot of horsepower. So um, most people buy the diesel as well to have a lot more torque. But uh, this one here, I think it has 470 pounds of torque to offer. And so far I haven't had any problems with this truck going anywhere. And I have been in some steep and difficult areas with it. The truck has a dual battery setup. Um, I have a lot of electrical stuff going on, so um, excuse my mess here with the cables. Here is the uh, second battery. I replaced the stock batteries after roughly a year because one of the stock batteries was already going bad, and so I switched to AGM batteries, which are really significantly better. And the stock batteries that come from the factory, yeah, they're not impressive anyway. But other than that, this is all stock. I haven't done anything to the engine. Uh, so I'm again, I'm really happy with how this engine is performing. And yeah, the miles per gallon uh, put tears into my eyes when I'm at the gas station. But other than that, it's a fun time to drive this truck. Now let's have a look at the inside of the truck. So now let's have a look at the inside of the truck. Very often these heavy duty or super duty trucks come with an additional switch panel up here, so called upfitter switches. This truck uh, didn't have those. It was not ordered with them. So I installed an additional switch panel here. The electrical stuff is under the hood. You saw all the wires before, but this allows me to turn on my air compressor that I have, the additional lights. And uh, yeah, I have still three open buttons here so I can install more lighting and um, maybe even an air horn if I wanted to. But this adds functionality and really makes it easier to uh, upgrade the truck with lights and everything else. I have the 12 inch screen here. It has the navigation system built in. 
Uh, I put a stream protector on here. I'm often in uh, desert areas and there's a lot of dust. And to protect the stream, uh, I put the stream protector in here. It makes a big difference in regards to the fingerprints that you will see on here. Other than that, it's a standard um, Ford F250 Super Duty. Uh, here in the middle, you can uh, see I installed this little panel. Uh, I pulled 12 volt power here so that I can charge my camera or my phone while I'm driving. The truck has a wireless charging pad down here. So you can see here I have my phone attached via magnet. It's not charging, uh, but that's okay. This is heavy duty. So if I go off road and uh, everything bumps up and down, this thing is not going anywhere. I also installed this trick release here. I can mount a GoPro here. And underneath here, probably difficult to see, I have a 12 volt outlet with two USB-C and one USB-A ports. And that really allows me to power the phone, power the GoPro, uh, making my life very difficult. Um, making my life very easy in regards to charging. Next thing you can see this uh, mirror here. This is not the factory mirror. You see the little cable mess behind it. Um, this is a rear view mirror with a camera. So instead of that this is a mirror when it's turned on, this is electric of course, I actually see the picture that the camera in the rear will pick up. It also has a built-in dash cam to the front and both front and rear camera are being recorded. I have a second dash cam here and for both I pull the power up from the ceiling and uh, that gives me a protection in case I should, should I get into an accident. But I also want to use this footage for like videos. Uh, and um, that's why the two cameras are in place. So if there's something unexpected, I can just pull the SD card and take a look at it. Other than that, there's nothing really different in the front here. Now let's move into the um, center of the truck. Uh, this is the center console and I have a safe in here. So this is not something that came from the factory, but it's a Ford um, branded safe. Now let's take a look at the back. Um, I put some storage boxes here right now. I'll explain that situation a little later. But you can see I have the seats folded up and I have a dark platform in here. So it's this, um, I made this platform myself out of plywood and a couple of two by fours. But a Shelly, my dog, is sitting in here. And I had like a hammock hanging here before and it wasn't stable enough for her. So with the dark platform, she's much more um, able to sit properly in the rear. And um, yeah, with the doggy bed there, she has enough cushioning. And uh, yeah, she's always a little stressed when I drive, not because of my driving, but driving in general. So with the dark platform, um, it has improved significantly for her. And I'm really happy that I did this. I also have some additional storage underneath. Um, not too much at the moment. I might redo this, uh, this storage platform or dark platform, how I call it at one point. Uh, but for now, um, this really provides Shelby with the entire space in the rear. And again, the storage boxes are usually not here and um, makes it easy for her to get in. I also have a step ladder for her because you can see this is really tall and Shelby is about 10 years old and she's not light footed anymore. So with the step ladder, she can easily get in here. You can see all this here. She's drooling when she looks out the window. Uh, not much I can do about it, but uh, that's really the inside of the truck. I want to show you one more thing on the inside of the truck uh, before we start looking uh, at the flatbed. So I mentioned before I have the WeBoost up there. The WeBoost I want to use when I work potentially with the T-Mobile Internet Connected. I need power for that and I don't want to have it run off the car batteries. So I had my off-road shop pull a 120 outlet and a 12 volt outlet here. And that allows me to plug in the WeBoost and run it off the batteries inside the camper. And therefore my truck batteries are not impacted when I'm using equipment that is technically attached to the truck, but is uh, powered from the camper. Let's take a look at the next item, the flatbed. Uh, when I bought the truck and started looking at campers, I wasn't ready to go with a flatbed. Uh, this flatbed here is Australian made, it's a MITS alloy uh, flatbed that comes from Australia. And then there are storage boxes here and here. And uh, this really allows me to carry a lot of gear. And as I was going through the process of 
buying a camper and this is a sliding camper so it fits into a regular uh, six and a half foot truck bed yeah i wasn't uh, sure in the beginning okay how much storage do i need and as i went through the process i realized a flatbed really would be able to give me all the storage that i need so that i can take my camping chairs with me and the super tramp has a lot of storage already but uh, really, I have a fireplace in here, I guess a, a propane fireplace. I have a, a bug tent in here, so in areas where there's a lot of bugs, I can just put up the tent, it has, uh, it's completely screened. I can be inside the tent for cooking, sitting around, uh, even working. I have a table with me, of course. But uh, that's really the uh, conclusion that I came to over the months, that a flatbed would be better. And there are a couple of companies here in the US that build flatbeds. And as I started going through the process of evaluating which ones I want, I also came to realize they have a long lead time, sometimes up to a year to get a flatbed. And that, of course, was not cutting it for me. I wanted something quicker. Uh, when I talked to my off-road shop, Basil from Basil's Garage in Vista, here north of San Diego, uh, he recommended Emmits Alloy flatbed. And uh, so far, I'm really happy with the flatbed. It provides the storage that I need and then some extras. So as an example, there's an eight gallon tank here. And I don't know if that comes over on camera, but carrying additional eight gallons of water with me makes a big difference when I go out into the desert or the wilderness for a week. Then with the uh, storage boxes, I can bring tools with me. So if I go into remote areas and um, I have a technical problem, I want to be able to at least do some troubleshooting and potentially fix um, some of those problems myself. Uh, I did a lot of work on this truck. I'm not a car mechanic by any means, but I think um, I'm good and dangerous enough to get at least some basic repairs done. But uh, yeah, carrying tools with me is an important item. The same thing applies to uh, really supplies in general. As an example here, this box, there's toilet paper, paper towels and trash bags in there. Important stuff when you go places. So you want to have this in an area where you can easily reach it. Tools in here, uh, there's like water hoses in here that I can A, fill up the water tanks no matter where I am, but there's also a collapsible water tank in here for the gray tank from the camper so that I can empty the tanks that the camper has and properly dispose of the water. I mentioned that this is a MITS alloy flatbed. Uh, this is a highly modified flatbed at this point. So we cut out a lot of pieces here. The reason is that the original mounting brackets really pushed the camper very high up, and I will put a picture here in the video, and it just wasn't suitable for my case. It really made it difficult to um, go certain places, the height of the entire thing. I mean, right now the pop top is up, it's very high, but uh, it was just like the center of gravity was very high up, and, and, and there was a long list of items that bothered me, including the looks uh, of this vehicle. And and when you put that much money in, you also want it to look good. And so I talked to Basil and uh, we decided let's lower the camper as much as possible. And uh, Basil went to work with his crew and I'm really glad I did. So you can see this here. Um, they put these um, steel tubes here and we lowered the camper as much as possible. Mitz was not that supportive in that process. But with lowering the camper, I also lost a little bit of the um, flexibility where the tires can go up and down from the suspension. So we had to cut this out to have enough room here. I'm still uh, debating, we probably need to move this box here a little further up to have um, this move back as well uh, so that there's no rubbing. But um, so far, uh, everything is working great and I'm really happy with the bed. The other thing with the bed that is really helpful, it still has room for my backup sensors and for the blind spot sensors as well. So I didn't lose any of that factory functionality because when the entire truck bed is removed, anything that is attached to that truck bed is drawn. So let's take another look uh, underneath the truck. This one here, that's the tank. This is not the factory tank. This is actually a replacement tank. And the factory tank came with 34 gallons um, volume. And uh, this is a gas engine, 34, liter, uh, 34 gallons of gasoline volume is not a lot when you're running about eight, nine miles per gallon. So this replacement tank actually can be filled up to 58 gallons. 
And that's really a game changer for me. The bad part is I lost about half an inch or three quarters of an inch ground clearance, but this is a steel tank, I'm not too concerned. But with the 58 gallons, now I can go between 400 and 500 miles before I have to fill up again. And that's really a game changer for the truck of this size. So now I can go into the back country and uh, really go deep down away from civilization and don't have to worry about that I run out of gasoline. When you go off-roading, the uh, miles per gallon go down even further. So 34 gallons was just not cutting it. And this helps me to avoid having to carry any type of jerry cans with me. So let's take a look at the storage boxes here. Uh, let's start down here and uh, I have my air compressor in here. Uh, the reason I carry an air compressor is to be able to put air into my tires as an example. And when you go off-roading, you lower the air pressure from those tires, A, for a more comfortable ride, but also for, I want to say, really safety reasons. You have more grip with the tire when it's wider. And uh, also, let's say, a fully inflated tire, uh, if you hit a really sharp rock, is at a much higher risk of um, being punctured compared to a tire that has flexibility in it because there's not all the air in it. With the air compressor, this is actually a dual air compressor from Air B. Uh, I have no problems connecting my hoses to the tires and then um, put air back in when I'm getting back onto pavement. Then here is storage, so here's my table, it's a foldable table. Here's my Gazelle bug tent, it's a gazebo tent. And uh, it has side walls that I have here as well, so that I'm protected from wind and rain. This is how you just close those lids. Here's the uh, other part of the Gazelle tent, it's very long, so it uses the entire section. Then here I have my um, fire can fireplace, it runs on propane, and uh, I have a, a cast iron skillet here. So this is part of my cooking setup. I have my outdoor carpets here and then here I have a tarp that goes over the rear entrance in case there's rain uh, so that I'm a little bit protected from the environment. So I realize this video is getting very long so we'll break here. So the first part of this video here is really just the expedition vehicle truck and the flatbed. And in the second video that I will link to up here, uh, that's where I will go through the Super Trim Camper and give you a full tour. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And I would say I'll see you in my next video. Take care.